You're listening to The Dental Guys, episode 99, a clinician's guide to excellent zirconia hybrids with Jack and Conrad of Absolute Dental Solutions. This week on The Dental Guys, we're bringing you a step-by-step guide to full arch zirconia hybrids. It's the hottest full arch fixed prosthetic in dentistry today, and we're bringing in two pioneers of zirconia, Jack and Conrad, to discuss what the lab needs, what the clinician needs to have chair side. Every step will be covered in this episode and episodes to come this week on The Dental Guys. This episode of The Dental Guys is brought to you by the Dental Crafters Network, your implant restorative connection. From surgical planning to patient-specific guides, quality implants, and final restorations, the Dental Crafters Network provides one relationship with infinite possibilities. Call 1-800-472-8302 today. That's 1-800-472-8302. Do you want to be able to understand, place, restore, and implement dental implants into your practice? Well, we've got the course for you, Restorative Driven Implants, taught by the Dental Guys. Restorative Driven Implants is coming to Des Moines, Iowa this fall, 2019. Head over to RestorativeDrivenImplants.com right now to sign up for the next series. Hey, welcome to this week's episode of the Dental Guys. I'm John, the Dental Guy. And I'm Wes, the dental guy. And man, uh, first of all, we've got a great episode planned for you. This is kind of one of two that is going to bring back the pioneers of zirconia, as we call them, as we first called them, Jack and Conrad from Absolute Dental Services. And, you know, this is exciting for us, Wes, because we're going to be talking about the actual step by step for zirconia hybrid. You heard that in the intro. It is legitimately going to be. Uh, probably one of the best guides I think you can you can do without going and taking a class. So we're excited to bring that to you. But before mm. we get to that, I want to talk, talk about- to you guys a little bit about something we're excited about in our <clears throat> own world. Because, you know, we're always talking about CE and kind of where we're at. And we've been going through the SPEAR curriculum now for what? What's it been? Three? Four years? Four, four years. years. Four years? Four years. And... and this is kind of weird to say, but we've almost finished it. How much money have we spent, John? Oh, let's not talk about that. <laughs> it's worth had, it, right? You know, I really want a new, I really want a fast car. We've Please been tell me about it's this. worth it. <laughs> it is worth it. It is. No, I mean, I, I'll be able to buy a lot more fast cars with all the cases I can now pull right. off because of Spear. So, I You're mean, right. I'm not complaining, but, but four years or so, I mean, I've taken all the seminars. We've taken, uh, this is going to be one of the final, really, this is the capstone workshop of the whole deal now we haven't Mm. taken the tmd stuff so that's something we just haven't gone down that pathway but pretty much everything else Mm -hmm. this is coming up in just the next couple of months complex case planning sequencing and phased treatment (laughs) workshop whoa 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 whoa. slow that down again and tell me what you just said (laughs) wow i mean complex case planning sequencing and phase treatment workshop so this is a whole workshop about, okay, so you've learned now in SPEAR how to treatment plan with facially generated treatment planning, how to understand the bite, how you need to design it, how to know what your restorations, how the, pre- how the preps need to be. Then we talk about the worn dentition, how to think about treating worn teeth, and it just goes on and on and on. And now the question is, okay, we know how to do all this stuff, but what if a patient says, okay, I, my... I have a, a two, this, I want to get this done in the next two years. Yeah. Over over a two year period. Or what if you've got you With, know implants in the mix that you have to get integrated before you can really go on to the next step? Or what if you're trying to jump somebody from implant from teeth to implants? Or you know what if you're trying to do long term temporization with composite buildups to get somebody from composite to crowns? Yeah, long term temporization. Insurance? These are yeah. things that are. This is hard. Yeah, guess who's teaching it? At least in our course. Darren Deister. Darren Deister. All right, we all know Darren from the wild, wild west of the Maxilla, right? right? Okay, so go back and check Darren out. He's one of our favorites. We love Darren. He loves coffee. 
So, Darren, mm-hmm. if you listen to this, we know you love coffee, and don't forget, yep. we're bringing you some. Oh, we're right? bringing it. We're going to talk about it too. And then Greg, the Greg Kenzer, you know who you are, <laughs> Greg, Greg Noah. Greg, we Greg, will bring you back us, on our podcast. Greg, found us at, we will bring Greg back on our podcast. Greg, if you're listening to this, because if not, he may punch us in the face. <laughs> Greg likes to I be mean, in the he, show. We, there was a moment where I was thinking that that might happen because he's like, "Hey, you had these right. other guys on the show. Uh, do I need to get? Do we need to get physical?" Right. I mean, he was ready because he was excited. I love this about Greg is that you know Greg is really the nuts and bolts, yeah, dentistry guy. He's he is able to take like there are some people that are idea people mm. and, and that's all and that's great and like philosophy ideas mm. greg has that but he's he's able to say okay so all right that's all great but let me tell you how to actually do it i like greg because he's a straight shooter too like he's not going to just like blow smoke he's <clears> not going to put a lot of polish on like hey this is how you need to do it these are some options, you know? Right. And let's get this done, right? Let's get it done. And it's it done. real world. It's real world. Right. Like, this is what, okay, he's going to show cases he's done that are mm. real cases um, that, 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 are, that, are, that he's pulled off from start to finish working with some great specialists. And then we got Bob Winter. You can't, you can't beat this team. I'm telling you. I mean, you. the man can prep a tooth. Right. So, I mean, you've got Bob. He's the human CAD cam. Right. The human drill right. press, I think. Drill press, right? <laughs> well, he, if he was placing implants. extremely knowledgeable if he was on placing materials, implants, right? I mean, right. You've got you got a materials expert Man. in Bob along with an amazing, you know, hand skills and knowledge and teacher. And, and we're going to be able to take somebody who understands all the lab side, somebody who understands all the restorative side, the implant side. You know, Darren bringing a lot of his experience with full arch, mm. uh, integration of, of the treatment planning we've learned through facially generated I, I mean, I can't even tell so we're you taking, how excited we're I am. We're taking a periodontist with us. We're taking Brad, the dental lab guy. He's bringing two of his primary technicians with him. Yep. Uh, John, from what I understand, we're all going to get a house, and we're going to have yep. a hash. Like, we're going to hash it out in the evening. Oh, yeah. Right? There's going to be some heated discussion. So it's all going to be really good. We're going to be doing some podcasting. They've already told us that, Spear. They just said, you guys are coming out here. We're going to do podcasting. Now, yep. you guys know we, we've we paid for this journey, right? And we and honestly, I am glad yep. to pay Spear for it because it has changed my practice, and I really appreciate yep. Spear education. Yeah, we're doing this with our money, man. I mean, right. we, we love what they do, and they've supported the show through things, but that's but right. th- this is us doing this. Just so everybody right. knows that it's important that, that they know <clears throat> that we're not just like paid consultants or something like that we don't we don't we're not getting paid by spear but they do know that a lot of you guys have been there because of in part maybe and because of what you've heard here and so they want to give back a little bit to our listeners and one of the ways that they've given back in the past and they're going to renew for our listeners is giving you um, a percentage off of spear online both john and i utilize spear online in our practice as a um, reception area TV that's hooked up to a Chromecast and playing educational videos. Um, We have it on the iPad for chair side presentations. And then also we use it to educate our team on the techniques and things that we Mm -hmm. learn when we go to these workshops. We come back and we, we don't have time to put the lecture together so we can set up a pathway of learning um, where our team can log in with their own credentials and get um, some education from Spear. A lot of it, too, qualifies for actual ADA SERP credits, so that's great. But um, for our listeners, the promo code that you need, and one, you just go down to the link in the description below in the podcast. You click on that. The promo code is TD. G, meaning The Dental Guys, TDG20, and that's going to get you $20 off for per month, $240 a year of Spear Online. And hey, listen, if you can't go, and even Which if you can't. 10% off. Yeah, it's 10% off, man. I'll take it. John, every Pretty day. Awesome. In fact, I don't think I used our yep. own promo code <laughs> for like the first time they <laughs> gave it to us. And I'm like, oh man, that's stupid. Yeah, that's so, a crazy okay. feeling. Yeah, but anyway, guys. Yeah, but we really appreciate Spear, you know, being willing to um, to show their support for the show, 
and, and the realization that people are coming out there be, in part because of us, you definitely owe it to yourself to get involved with a high quality educational institute like Spear. And there are others that are great. You know, we've mm -hmm. talked about others, but we believe Spear is doing it right. And hey, if we can help save you 10%, then that's just uh, makes us proud to be a, a part of that and in a little part. So um, we're excited. We'll definitely keep you guys up to speed with who we're going to be talking to when we get out there. And we'll definitely report back to you on how that workshop changes our practice in the same way that every workshop we've gone to out there, every seminar has, has really had a profound effect on my practice. I, I couldn't be where I am today without uh, what I've learned out there. Um, so with that in mind, uh, remember that at the end of this episode, we want you guys to connect with us on social media. Tell us what you think. Um, so uh, after just a, a brief message from our sponsor, we're going to be coming back for uh, episode 99 and talking about step-by-step -step guide to zirconia hybrids on the dental guys. This is Justin Goodbrand. and here is today's tip. Now is the time to do your year-end marketing plan. Meet with your business coach and your marketing team to determine the best course of action to end this particular year with a bang. Maybe it's as easy as a social media blitz. Regardless, don't wait until November to start this process. It will be way too late. For more information about today's topic and other dental related topics, head over to financiallysimple.com forward slash dentist. Until next time, make it a great day. This tip is for informational purposes only. Please speak with a competent financial advisor regarding your specific needs. Justin Goodbread is a registered investment advisor with Heritage Investors. Visit heritageinvestor.com, financiallysimple.com for additional information. Well, it's a great evening to be uh, podcasting in the same room in the same room which is weird which is kind of weird and I'm I'm glad that we've brought back on um, our guests from episode 95 Conrad Rensburg and Jack from Absolute Dental Services over there in Durham North Carolina last time we had such a good time John talking yeah. about um zirconia and and what's next full arch prosthetics what's next so if you haven't listened to that go back and check out episode 95 yep but today welcome back friends of the dental guys podcast yeah, thanks for being back <laughs> thanks on, for coming guys. back on guys yeah, it's an honor thank to you be thank you for back. having us yeah we had a great time last time just felt like uh we could feel you know the passion you guys have for what you do <clears throat> and you know the experience also came through, you know, loud and clear with kind of what all you've seen. And we had talked about initially maybe doing a show that would encompass, you know, materials and what's coming next and also some clinical. And we didn't even get to a lot of clinical because we got so into, which was great, we got so into just discussing materials and kind of what's, what's new, what's coming, what you've been doing, what's working, what's not working. Mm -hmm. So I think we, Wes and I talked about with you guys just trying to put together a show that really appeals to the clinician that is either doing full arch implant dentistry or wanting to do more full arch implant dentistry um, and is looking for kind of guidelines on what to watch out for, understanding the process better, whether you are a brand new uh, a dentist to this or whether you're a seasoned veteran, we hope that you can get something out of this. So right. kind of the outline of this show that we kind of thought about with you guys was we want to go through a little bit about the process of what you guys do with your doctors on say, we're just gonna choose a full arch zirconia prosthetic. Let's say a maxillary full arch zirconia prosthetic and let's go through the steps. You know, appointment number one, appointment number two, appointment three, what happens at those appointments? And then let's go through with each step, what are some of the things that the doctors need to be thinking about, be aware of, what could get messed up? What are the most common errors you guys see? And then also from the lab side, What's going on back there in the behind the scenes and what are some things that doctors should be looking at from their lab that, that could be some red flags on the doctor's side? Um, and first of all, before we, before we go into that, for those of you guys who don't, for those of you who don't know who you guys are, how long have you been doing full arch implant prosthetics? I mean, it would be since the very beginning, mm, since, 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 yeah. since the beginning yeah, of time. Since the whole on full process. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Since um, it feels it'll be, like the beginning of time. Yeah. <laughs> uh, early, early, early on. I mean, it, mm. at that point, Zircon was was the only one. I mean, and it they just started doing them, and they were really the only game in town um, for a short period of time, and then you know kind of jumped in from there. So very, very early on in the early stages. But Zirconia, we've been doing Zirconia at least in the laboratory side, both of us. 
since it first came out onto the market. You, you're more than me, yeah. yeah. My experience started with, with the true all on four, you know, when we went to Vegas in, I think it was 04, 05, and the surgeons had all these life surgeries and patient bites an apple and, you know, drink some champagne. And I realized the surgeons needed the champagne more than the uh, patients because it was <laughs> such an unpredictable protocol. It, it truly was. Everybody was, I think the surgeons were more amazed than the patients that it actually worked, where today it's extremely predictable. Yep. And, and I think it's such a good uh, topic because Jack and I deal with this, you know, almost every day. We, we got a case the other day. And uh, the doctor prescribed, he sent us two PVS impressions, upper yeah. and lower, for a full rehab. Close tray. Close tray Close impressions. Tray. Mm. The prescription read uh, upper lower zirconia hybrid A2 go to finish. Wow. Whoa. Yeah. And that was it. <laughs> so we were like, yeah, we'll wow. get right on that. Worst See, this, case, is, yeah. this is the stuff that I, I just love, yeah. like to hear this, because I feel like, and I, you know, you guys know we 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 definitely know both Wes and I have a problem with ranting, and we're gonna try <laughs> to limit that because we want to focus on what we can do to be better. Down boy, sure. but <laughs> but we de- we hear that all the time yep. on the laboratory side, and it is so scary, right? You know what's going on because there are some maybe some labs that would try to make that happen. Well, and you know? that's the problem. So we don't here. We definitely don't. We hold them to the fire. And it's in their best interest and the patient's best, best interest to have a successful outcome. And we you know, look out for them and we'll guide them through the process. Although sometimes you kind of have to really wrangle them and mm. uh, kind of fight it. At the end, it's for everybody's benefit. Mm, sure. uh, but a lot of laboratories do. They yeah, do try to pull it off, and it becomes disastrous, mm. right? So, see, I think people are, are sometimes, and it goes clinical and technical, scared to lose the business. Mm. You know, yes. if a patient walks in, they squeeze you for a few bucks. You know, do you take the case or do you lose the case? In some cases, you end up being married to that patient for the rest of your career, oh, and yeah. nobody makes any money. And that's the same for the lab industry. And when Jack joined us, I said, you know, we've always had this policy: I'd rather not do it than have to do it for free or yeah. worse, pay in for the case. You know, I'd rather be playing golf than sit here at 10 o'clock on a Friday night trying to figure out how to go from impressions to final in three days. And uh, so it's such good timing, Jack. I think you've got a uh, copy of the book. Jack and I, uh, we get these questions so often. We, we ended You're up holding up writing. a handbook for those of you listening. Holding You're holding up, up a handbook in the video. New protocol manual. So everything we're going to discuss tonight is basically in the show them the last page with your beautiful picture on it. I'm seeing some beautiful Oh, there we are. Look at that. We got some oh, look oh, at man. you guys oh, looking yeah. all yeah, dapper. So nice. Yeah. So so what we did in this protocol <laughs> the sh- manual. I love Jack's photo. I just got to say <laughs> the scarf. The scarf. The scarf. The scarf. Yeah. Jack, so mm. European. I know. He looks yeah. like he's straight Actually, out of Germany. I'll straight <laughs> out. That's a Marcus always, Blotz type of I always call it something different than European, but I will refrain from that. Everybody loves the scarf picture. I don't think they have a button to bleep me out. Everybody right. loves you know, a scarf picture. So, yeah, so yeah. you I'm come up with a protocol a scarf manual for, for your doctors mm. in order to make this process as predictable as possible. Yep. So so obviously, with that in mind, we're going to have a much easier time even today talking about this is perfect timing. So let's mm. maybe start by just going through, at, from a bird's eye view starting, w- w- tell me, what tell us, what are the appointments that you recommend if you're doing a zirconia hybrid? Give us the bird's eye view first of, what happens at each appointment? How many appointments are there? What what basically happens at each appointment? And then we'll kind of maybe dive through each one. Sure. Yeah, let's let's do appointment one. So so I think let me let's start with you know there's different ways to process these hybrids. Mm. You know we can use the transitional and go to final, and that reduces the appointments to about three. Yes. But if you look at a traditional, you know we want to get impressions, uh, bite rims, model verification, and that's the second appointment. And then from there, we go tooth try-in, prototype, and final, if all okay. goes well. So depending on the uh, number of tooth try ins So if we take a little step back, our first appointment would be abutment-level impressions. And there was a stage where I think more me than Jack were promoting working straight into the implant level. You know, if you have a case, and a lot of surgeons would send the patients to the restorers without converting to abutment level, you know, to tissue level restorative platform. Mm. And uh, I was speaking at Piers a few years ago and Barry Franson, one of the proselytes, walked up to me after and said, you should stop promoting restoring into implant level. I didn't really agree with him. 
and 10 cases later, I realize it, it turns into a disaster, especially with today's internally hexed implants. You get into undercuts so quickly when you try to take, you know, four or five uh, implants. And, you know, even with a small divergence, the hexes go into undercut. And that's when it's hard to uh, model and verify. Le and let me I just learned, clarify, yeah. too, for those of you who don't, because, you know, what you just said there, of course, in Wes and I, that's our world. For those of you who don't maybe know those term that terminology as well listening to the show, you know, you, you, you've restored implants. I'm assuming everybody that's listening to this has restored implants on a single implant level. And we know that, you know, you, you take uh, the healing abutment off and you place the impression coping in and you're taking an implant level impression you know, directly to the platform, the implant. What they're, what we're talking about is abutment level would be placing a secondary abutment on top of that implant that stays in place forever. And then that secondary abutment has an impression coping that goes over it, a open or closed tray, preferably open tray, which we can talk about. And so working at the implant level, which was the way it was done for a long time because that's kind of all we had, has the advantage of having more vertical room, right? That's one advantage, uh, but has a lot of disadvantages in terms of angulation, like you said, having undercut problems in these, you know, if you have an externally hexed implant, mm, really you solve a lot of those problems. But if you have an internally hexed implant, which most of our implants are these days, uh, very difficult to get good draw well, in those situations. Yeah, and then you and may have screw accesses coming out all over the place, right? So is that one of the reasons, is that why you advocate that? Or is it more about the, not having to try to take things on and off and, and numbing the patient? What, what is it about for you guys? So it, it has a lot to do with that. And it's absolutely going and, and engaging into the implant. But it's it's also, and, and I learned this from, from Lyndon Cooper many, many years ago, which was, it's better to work, you know, equi gingiva or slightly sub gingiva or, or even super gingiva than it is working, trying to do one of these cases with multiple sites working so far below the tissue. It's incredibly difficult, even for a seasoned clinician. It's incredibly difficult to work to the fixture. When you bring it up to, to gingival height, to equi gingiva, it's a lot easier to manage the case mm -hmm. than it is to take it down to the fixture. And you, I mean, one reason right off the bat is, is you can't see what you're doing down there, yes. uh, but you have a tissue management issue where a lot of times, you know, you're going to have to go through and, you know, if you did go to the fixture, you're going to have to tissue punch those sites. Or you're going to have to remove or manage that tissue just to get that restoration to seat, especially mm -hmm. in the maxilla where you have an excess amount of tissue above the fixture. There's a lot going on that you're fighting to try to deliver that restoration right. to multiple sites. And everybody you, knows just taking a healing abutment off a single implant, right. how quickly things collapse. If you have to go in the lab and polish that for mm. two minutes, sometimes it's a problem getting it seated. So you imagine, you know, a five or six implant case trying to just reseat the case after polishing it in the lab Becomes for just a couple difficult. minutes. If you don't have your healing abutments back on, it's an it's a potential nightmare. Well, let me just say this is that with the advent of this zero bone loss concept, John, as we like to talk about. Hmm. And the new book uh, that came out recently about uh, Thomas uh, Linkovicus, yeah. if I can say that right after a long yeah. day. <laughs> <laughs> but with the advent of bone level implants and bone growth over the implant interface and not bone loss, hmm. um, this uh, surgically, we don't want to see as a surgeon bone loss at the platform level. So getting using a secondary abutment, um, you know, to create uh, tissue level um, prosthetics uh, allows for cleansability, something that only is, you put this on the implant once, right? you're done, it's torqued into place, it's verified that it's seated properly, and then from there on out, it's just easy for the clinician and, and the patient and the laboratory. Right, right. You know, the, these things really make a difference. So there's a lot of people, and I'm just going to say this, and then I'm done before I get into a rant. There's still <laughs> a lot of people that are using using these techniques of not using second-stage abutments yeah. on implants. Yeah. And I have a problem with it because I don't think that Good laboratory techniques can be used, especially in materials like we're talking right. about. Right? Can you? Can you? I mean, how do you feel you can do milling zirconia 
in those situations? Is it a challenge to mill a zirconia prosthesis if you're trying to work to the fixture level? It's it's a challenge. And if we go back to, you know, the, the original protocols for these, um, you know, you wanted two millimeters of thickness of zirconia material kind of kind of encompassing the tie base. When you go down to the fixture like that, you are forced to thin that zirconia out at its most important and weakest part. Right. right. Well, right. That's, that's yeah. Important so right yeah, that's I important. mean, it's it's important. And and even if you take you take that zirconia down and it's getting down to where it's it's so thin to where it's almost transparent and you could see that connection through the zirconia, it's really scary. Yeah, so you and may get away with that more on a metal-based prosthetic. On a metal-based, uh, absolutely. Because you're absolutely. milling metal yeah. to the fixture. And, yeah. You know, and clinically, when you think about, let's say we have five implants on an upper arch, <coughs> those are all going to be divergent. If you take an implant-level impression with five divergent implants, you can't splint them because you won't get draw, they won't come out. So when we come to a correction abatement, not only do we control the screw access, which is not a big problem today because we have technology that can take care of it. You've got angulated screw access and, mm -hmm. and all those, those features that we can use very effectively. But it really helps to get a verified model much more predictably if we're working abutment mm -hmm. level. So I think, okay. yeah, we can probably there's put that to yeah. Yeah. So yeah, point, So back really to that, that's a great conversation to kind of talk about why that's important. So before appointment one, ideally, we have our secondary abutment on the implant, angles Correct. corrected, mm -hmm. tissue heights relatively equal. Mm -hmm. uh, and then in appointment one, we're taking our final impression. So kind of talk a little bit about that. You know, what are you instructing the doctor to do there? Let me just throw something else in there, something to look at as well. And we've seen and we've gotten in trouble with this. I think the drive, especially for Jack and myself and our lab, has been not to overlap hybrids on the mm. upper. Thank I think you. that was mm. one of the biggest things yep. we, we did. No flange. We, yeah, no flange. We, so our, our motto is if we put a piece of floss on the intaglio, it has to touch the entire hybrid all the way around. And, and it's, it's a very tough thing to get into our technicians' mindsets because... Yep. They're thinking about, you know, uppers being overlapping. So what we, we've seen some issues as well, just something to look at is when you're going to place a multi-unit or a multi-base abutment, we would rather have it slightly subgingival than supergingival because as soon as that abutment comes supergingival, we have to overlap the hybrid to get back to the tissue level. So it's much easier, like Jack said, to emerge from something subgingival is not ideal but it's better than having to go negatively back to the tissue because now we have this huge pocket or socket inside of the hybrid so what you're saying is equa gingiva or just slightly slightly better. just slightly, slightly you're slightly. talking half a millimeter it's maybe a three quarters of a millimeter right yeah. Yep. yeah and we and we can probably work with something a little too far sub gingival better than we can hygienically work with something super gingival. Right. So, so how so, are yeah. you recommending that your doctors take impressions? Let's talk about that. What's your what's yeah. your preferred technique? Appointment one. So so we ask them normally to send us a quick pre op. You know, if the patient's in a conversion denture or or you know um, edentulous, snap a quick impression, send that to us and allow us to make a custom tray with a wax window. We really like to do open tray impression copings. You know, yes. it, it's proven over time to be more accurate. Um, and then the question is always, hey, do we splint or not splint? And I get that question often from my clinicians. And they say, well, you know, we can probably take a good impression without splinting the copings. My argument against that is always when you splint, let's say, five or six impression copings together with, and we'll talk about that, we use different products. If you take your impression and the, the most posterior coping doesn't engage the PVS, it will still be held in position by the acrylic bar that you just created to hold it. So if you have to take an impression and you pull it and one of the copings are moving, because that's how we tell our clinicians to look at for an accurate impression, take a little probe, push on every impression coping, make sure there's no <coughs> movement, and then mm -hmm. you know you got a good solid impression. If you don't splint those together, and one of them are moving, you got to retake the entire impression. Mm. If you have a little void, let's say on the posterior um, implant or uh, impression coping, we can just fill it up with some wax, but the coping will still be stable. So to me, I agree, PVS today is accurate enough that we can take impressions without splinting. 
I don't think we splint for accuracy. I think we splint for convenience, stability, and saving, yeah. and stability, stability the and saving. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Right. So, so, what do you do? You recommend a particular impression material, or does that do you feel like that matters? No. I, what we've seen is, and we used to do the little floss bridge through, and then to put the overlay on, and you know, it took hours to do that. Then cut it, separate it, relude everything. We're using a, a chair side material. Um, it's a reline by Densply. Um, I'll tell you in a second what it's called. And we basically put our finger on the lingual, build a little bridge, and the assistant just lights everything up. It's a dual cure um, reline material. And we found that to be extremely accurate. So we've simplified the process of splinting. And I'm probably going to get crucified for saying you don't have to cut and those things. But we've stopped cutting because the material just you know, post-processing, we don't get that much shrinking in it. So is it safer to cut between every bridge and then just relute? Probably is. Um, but we've stopped using Duralay mm. years ago. It's just a very tough material to work with. Gotcha. What about impression material itself? Do you recommend PVS? You know, do you like uh, Impergum? What, what kind of material do you, if, if, if somebody wants to start, uh, or does, do you feel like that matters a lot? I think medium body PVS, mm-hmm. and I always tell them, you know, after you built your bridge around your impression copings, however you, <coughs> you decide to do that, take a little bit of light body, flow it under the bridge. Yeah. You know, if that bridge, and I get this question, is if that acrylic sags down and touches the tissue, it doesn't really matter because we'll just it'll just be a complete unit in the impression. Right. But try to flow a little bit of light body underneath it. Most of my guys use, um, most of my clinicians use light bo- uh, medium body to, to fill up the tray and then really overfill the tray. Mm. We get these impressions where you can see, man, we're trying to save 20 bucks on an impression. Yeah by using as, min- as minimal impression material as we can to take that impression. So overfill the tray, get good engagement, and then let it set up without moving it. And cover mm-hmm. as much area as possible. Yeah, I, I was going to say, comes- Jack, one of the things that people forget, even though we're doing a horseshoe-shaped open pallet design prosthetic, right. why is the pallet important? I use that pallet, especially in a three-shape design, to go ahead and pin the master cast throughout the rest of the case. And I use those landmarks. So if you don't capture any of those landmarks, um, I have nothing to bring the case together when I'm bringing in a pre-op, when I'm scanning it in and attaching it to that file with the master cast. If all that's gone, so it's it's important to capture as, as much area as possible in that impression so that we can go ahead and utilize that when we're scanning it in with three shape because three shape will give you three points of contact to go ahead and marry up model match it it. and without that we have no data to model match so there's no landmarks there's no information so very very important and i'd like to clarify what you're saying because it's such a helpful tool for us up to the digital revolution where we had these things you could send us a study cast of a pre-op and send us an impression of the implants in place, and there was no way to marry those two models with each other. Now, we, by looking at the Ruge and looking at the, you know, the sulcus, we can model match, and we can actually use that as a pre-op. So that's a huge advantage yeah. for us. Yeah, and I think we're going to come back to that, maybe mm. if we have time, talking about how if you have digital scanning technology in your office, you yep. can actually use that same idea to mm. you, uh, copy, essentially, the prototype that you have yeah. Uh, send that information to you guys without having to send the prototype back, which has changed my right. whole world as far as not having to make exactly. two prototypes. We'll get we'll get to that later on, but and I think that, you're, having you're that probably, data is super important. Oh yeah, and and there must definitely be some listeners thinking right now: Can I take a digital impression on a full arch mm. with four or five mm. implants? Glad you brought that up. And, yeah, and it's 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 definitely no, not yet. It's uh, coming. The scan well, is, we had uh, we had somebody you guys know, Mark Ludlow on mm. uh, just a, a few episodes back talking about he's doing some of that primary research and like you say it's mm. coming and mm. he's working with a company now to kind of validate that process to try mm. to create a validated process but as you said we're not quite there yet mm. not well, quite go back found. to episode 93 and listen to that if uh, yeah. you want to hear more about that. so mm. so what else happens at appointment one is that is that the main goal for appointment one is to create a high quality impression for you guys yep yeah so so once we get that impression send it to the lab, and I'll give you a quick shortcut here. If you have a, you know, a lab close, we have the ability to pour a model in your office. What you can do, and this is a credit to Jack, it's a great idea he came up with, you can pour the model in your office soft tissue or send it to the lab, let them pour a soft tissue, we can get it right back. Take the hybrid, screw that down onto the model, and then take an impression over the hybrid on the model. 
then mm -hmm. take the hybrid, put it back in the patient's mouth, send us the impression, you know, either with lab putty or PVS, whatever you want to use, send that back. And what we do is we'll then fill that up with acrylic and, and build a prototype. Mm -hmm. So, it so we have an exact point. replica. As so far essentially, as you just point. made like a Solera duplication kit. For That's those right. Yeah, like Solera, and and this is it's funny because in this first appointment gets gets so tricky because from that first appointment we could branch off into three or four techniques as we're right. moving forward. Mm. So you can do that. Um, Let, let's you can assume do, for this discussion that they're not mm. close because I okay. think that that's, I mean, that's, I mean, I know that <laughs> yeah. there's so many things like you so, mentioned, being able to simplify into three point and I'm all about that, but mm. I think most people are, are, you know, shipping a lot of their stuff. Yeah. And so, let's keep it right. yeah. So, so we'll go basic, the, the normal kind of, yeah. Thing. Yeah. Let me just bring in, you, you probably agree with me on this. The biggest challenge we have is setting the bite. Yep. It, it's the same as denture. You can have some removal technician. Finding a good bite is the hardest thing to do. So even if you're not close, you know, send us the impressions. We'll then pour the model, and then we'll make a model verification jig. That's okay. you know that's where we want to go. Verification jig is important. Now the 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 link here, the the one I like more. Instead of then sending you a bite room, because our normal lab process after the first appointment is bite room, model verification, and the model goes back to the clinician. Then you take the model verification jig place it on the abutments by hand, don't screw it down because it'll just talk into place, and then see if you see any movement or play. Right. On a side note, anything is wrong, screw all those abutments down, and we use the impression copings to create our model verification, separate between each implant, relude them, and just take a new impression. Right. And that's normally a very accurate impression. And it's it's very important, if I might inject, because I'm going to go ahead and add this here, is the model verification. So as mm -hmm. we're going forward, I'm going to point out all these areas of catastrophic failure and causes of. The verification is incredibly simple. It's an incredibly quick appointment, and it is one of the most avoided, yeah. like the plague. Yeah, and if crazy. you want to absolutely guarantee failure in the restoration, when you mm. get all the way to the end, don't model verify. Don't verify. Yep. And I and and I can tell you, I I even even good friends of mine, um, uh, you know that that I've I've known for years and years and years. Don't name them. No, 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 I'm not. It's not anybody. It's not anybody you know. It's definitely not. Um, but it's it's one of those things where, well, you know, I think I got it pretty good. Um, yeah, we we always force and we force upon everybody, no matter who they are, the verification. And and a lot of times we get a lot of pushback on mm -hmm. the verification. I one one case in point because I can name you know catastrophic failure that I know. Um, same thing. Good friend of mine. Guaranteed me that um, everything was verified. We went ahead, went through the whole case, did the the final Zerk. Uh, it was absolutely stunning. He, he had a most distal implant, uh, and it was a pretty good span between the most anterior and the most distal. And he was going to final torque, and he said it sounded like a gunshot went off <laughs> when the zirconia snapped. He jumped, the patient jumped, and come to find out, he said. My apologies, I didn't verify that master cast. And mm. in that instance, mm. that is, if if you can, what keys to success? One of those keys, because these can be. I tell everybody, these are the simplest Extremely cases simple, to yeah. do, or they could be the most difficult cases to do. The choice is yours. Mm. Yeah, and I think what novice, I think what novice clinicians sometimes don't realize, and I say that with a lot of respect, is. They think if I take a shortcut on the front end, I may save some time. Mm. But what they don't realize is if you don't model verify, let's say the, the normal case flow is five clinical appointments, normally of you know, 45 minutes, half an hour each. If we find out the model wasn't verified when you try to deliver the final, we go back to five clinical appointments, right. yes. which you do not get paid for. And right. that's where I think Jack and myself Such have been successful. Such a simple is, process. Is, so simple. Just is verify. To say, this is important because we know this will save you ultimately from doing this case for free. So that's you know, a, this is great, and I think that this is exactly what people need to hear, that this second appointment, to crucial. me, is sounding like it's maybe the most important appointment oh, it's of major. them all. Is yeah. that true? It's, it's, it's major. And, and you know, to what Jack said, sometimes people won't model verify that. Tell us, oh, no, we verified everything's good, and then send an X-ray with the final delivery, and we're three, four millimeters off but our hybrid fits the model. And I think technicians, especially us, mm. really pay attention not to say, 
well, does it fit the model? Because it's not really a fair argument, especially in Crown and Bridge, because we could have ported wrong, it could be different things. Unfortunately, in hybrids, when we have supposedly verified the model, if our hybrid fits the model, then we're off the hook. Mm-hmm. You know, and and you know, it's it's kind of ugh, I I don't want to say that because I never want to shift the blame, but it also shows you how accurate this workflow is. When you model verify and that verification jig fits the model and fits the mouth, I can absolutely guarantee you the hybrid will fit 100% and you will yep. never have to take a new impression. So it's very, yeah. very important. And one thing I'll just throw in that we've talked about on the show before is just the, the simple one screw test, right? One which we test, talk yeah. about as an easy way, you know, go to the most distal implant on one side and torque one screw mm-hmm. hand yep. tight and see if the other side comes up. And then repeat on the other side. You know, unscrew yep. that screw. Go to the other most distal implant. A single screw test is, is I think, the most accepted way of knowing. Because sometimes, so. even visually, you, you know, you mentioned putting it in there, it can be difficult to see uh, right. because things are moving around. Uh, but I think that yes, if if you don't verify, and I think that I know you're trying to be careful to not, you know, be too harsh on this. But I think it's very <laughs> true that this is the place where the lab is either on the hook or off the hook here, guys. So if you're mm. not if if the if it fits the model, and and it doesn't fit the mouth, uh, or even if there's just a little bit, if you feel that you know that that you know that feeling, Wes, it just when feels right. You know that feeling when you're screwing a screw in, <laughs> loose loose tight, and, and it's like you're talking about and, and, loose loose and tight, and it's loose loose loose, and it's tight, and you're like yes, or the feeling where the sphincter tone increases, mm-hmm. where that screw it's starts kinda, to feel like there's a little resistance. Is that the threads bending, John? And you're like, <laughs> and and. And that is about the, but every, and the thing is like, this is, I've talked to people who really are experienced at this, uh, clinicians, and they're like, you know, when it's not right, you know, when you go to that mm, final, or screw, even when yeah, you go yeah. to the tooth try-in and you're screwing in those cylinders Listen. and you just feel a little bit of something's not quite right. And it's time mm. when you feel that to back up a step just, and make sure that you know think, where you're at. Just think. Now, and okay. you, again, you, I want to just make sure to clarify you recommend if it does not verify with say the one screw test section and take a new mm. impression not to section and then rejoin in one area you recommend if that if that happens you prefer a new impression he's sectioning yep. and he he the type of verification cylinders he's using are basically impression copings right. or cylinders that right. you can put but you don't want to just rejoin and then reset an analog is what i'm hearing you want to well, actually if, have a let's new say impression. you only have one out yeah then yeah. and you say it's definitely this one you can section just that part but why not just take another impression like you're saying exactly that's right. what that's i would do that, that we're not working from a time. broken model right. which i that's hate right, yeah. right? Yeah. So step one, okay. we've made sure that we're taking excellent impressions. Step two, the lab's going to send you a verification jig. And then also a bite rim, bite correct? Rim. Bite rim. So what do we do? What are we going to yeah. do with the bite you rim? You said that that was a big important step. Right. One of the hardest things with mm. Larch is capturing a excellent bite verification right. bite. Right. So run through that and some of the most common things that you see that, that don't go right with that. So let me take a side shift here just yeah, before. Jack's it. the material specialist, and then I'll, I'll back off a little bit on this. But what, what we figured out was if we can find a better way to get to an acceptable occlusal position, your video, know what we're looking for, buccal lingual position, and a, a converted hybrid at surgery stage is a very, very helpful tool for that because we can take smile pictures, we can say patient doesn't like this, midline is off a little bit. It gives us a point. So even... To your point earlier, if that clinician is out of town, send us the impression, let's pour the model, make a verification <coughs> jig, make sure that everything is where it needs to be, and then send it back, get the patient in, do your model verification, take the hybrid out, screw it down on the model, and take a lab putty impression for us of that. That would eradicate the bite room, you know, in the guessing game of are we back mm. in vertical, is this where we need to be? So that's a really good shortcut. If we don't have a, a hybrid in place, then unfortunately it's going to be mm. a, a, a bite room bite appointment. Room. Where we made, I personally made a big mistake in the beginning, we used to make a full vestibule bite room. Mm. And we would set the teeth up traditional denture style. Mm-hmm. In two or three cases, we delivered the final and the patient goes, I lost all my vestibule support. You know, I look 20 years older. So we realized early on the bite room, the try-in, and the final has to match. You know, and this was before the days of prototyping. So, so that appointment for me is very important. And at that stage, when you see this patient needs vestibule support, 
now we can discuss going to CONUS or making a change mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. before we deliver the final hybrid and say, well, you know, we lost vestibule support, we missed that. So I think that's an important step to always, and hopefully some good advice for labs out there if they're listening, your tooth setup has to mimic the final almost exactly if you can. And right, that, so that basically what you're critical. saying for our listeners is that if you need vestibular support, basically you need lip, lip support, support. Yeah. that means you need to do a removable prosthetic. Now there's yep. many yes. options for that, and we'll talk about that in another episode with the master of CONUS, Conrad, <laughs> his middle yes. middle name is Conus. And, uh, <laughs> Who's and that? I actually like but, that middle name is Conus. Not sure I want yeah. that distinction. Conrad, Conrad Conus Runsberg. <laughs> yeah, there we go. So, but if if you need vestibular support, we're talking about removable from here on out. Okay, yep. doesn't mean yep. you can't go forward with something, but it but your your patient's going to suffer a little bit from the lack of yep. lift support, and they're going to look mm. older. And I like that idea, as you said, about you know using the conversion prosthesis for that wax rim design. Do you, if they take an impression of the prosthetic, the conversion prosthetic, and they send that back with the verification jig, do you then go to tooth try-in, or do you still send back a wax rim at that vertical and have them verify it in a wax rim? No, I think what we'd like to do then is, and yeah. this is Jack's forte, is go to a prototype. You can, you <coughs> can go to a prototype from there. Trying. So you go yeah. right it's, to a it's, prototype it's, without any wax if you can get that type yeah. of impression. Yeah, if, if you can get that, what it does, basically what it does is it gives us a, a, it gives us a vertical, gives us a, a, a good centric, a good idea. <laughs> it gives us a good jumping off point as far as midline and size ledge mm-hmm. position. There's some very important information that we can collect from that. Um albeit it's not 100%, it gives us a guide because mm. you can't just go into the design software blind. Mm. And, and a lot of times, if, if we go the bite rim route, we will generally stay the setup route, right? Because mm. when you're working with the bite rim and the removable techs, they'll know exactly what to do with that. Where if we kind of jump that bite rim into, let's say, CAD to get a design for a prototype, they're going to look at it and, and have no idea what they're looking at because mm. they're looking for a study model, right? Right, right? What this does is it gives us that study model for the CAD CAM designer to go ahead and give us our setup. Mm. Mm. What's nice about prototyping is, is you can do it at this point or you can do it later on. This actually saves us some time in between uh, because they'll be able to give us a good, solid prototype design um, with, and it, let's say, uh, a pretty close to established vertical and centric midline position and size ledge, tooth arrangement, tooth mm. size, tooth shape, tooth mold. Um, off of that, surgical conversion, right? So that's that's pretty nice. So the difference that's, you would say then, if I to decide which way to go, is if the patient's conversion prosthesis is close enough to the final that you don't have to make major changes to things like vertical or midline. You can make minor changes in in the design, but uh, but that's, I guess, that's where it gets a little fuzzy, I would suppose, Mm. would be, you know, determining, well, how much change can you make, right? If the conversion prosthetic Mm. is, you know, you want smaller teeth, for instance. Well, what does that mean? Right, and so trying to communicate that could become a little challenging. So, in that, so when in mm-hmm. doubt, do you go default to a bite rim, or do you say, you know, we've had enough experience with this. If you send us mm-hmm. photos, if you send us lip at rest, and you send us full smile, and you send us enough information that, and you send us a good impression of the conversion prosthesis on a model, that you guys are able to yep. do that all in CAD. With without a doubt, if mm-hmm. if you have the ability, and that's why a a, a well converted surgical denture is so important it Mm. used to just be for patient comfort you know patient acceptance we'll take your teeth out you'll go home with fixed teeth we are we're very involved with guided surgery with latch conversions and that's a whole different discussion right there but what we're able to do with our synergy system is do a diagnostic wax up superimpose back into small pictures and then that becomes our conversion denture which is based off a diagnostic so that's the future of what we're doing we get that patient so close to the final that the jump is so much easier. Now, let me tell you this. Let's, let's just take one more angle before we move on to the third appointment, and then I'll let Jack do his magic. 
the better way, instead of taking an impression of that hybrid on the tissue, is to actually scan that conversion mm. denture with right. uh, with any type of right, scanning which is system. what we just like to do. Yeah. yeah, 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 very, very accurate. So basically, it is take the conversion denture out. You put four scan flags on. And we cover all of this in this in the manual. guide. So if mm -hmm. you need one, you know, just contact us through the website. We'll gladly send you a, a PDF or a hard copy. But then we can take that, import it straight into our digital design. And now we can do diagnostic changes based mm -hmm. off what the patient picks. So we can make huge changes. When I open the bite a millimeter, we can do it, broaden the buccolingual arch, you know, that's not a, so so for me. If we can move away, and you probably agree with this, if we don't ever have to do a bite room for a bite verification, that saves us so many clinical yeah. appointments and so sure. much heartache in the lab. I think but that it's just as a just, clinician, right, we're, yeah. and this is maybe the the change in generations between where we were when I got, even when I got out of dental school, it makes me feel old, right? Where there's still this comfort zone with with wax and moving teeth. You know what well, I'm right. saying? That, you know, it hey, sure we, we know when a prototype's milled, a prototype is milled, so I remember, and it's, and it's done. You feel like, yeah. okay, is it is it going to be is it right. going to be good enough? You know, and that's yeah. something that is interesting to hear you guys say. Like, it's not even an issue. Like, we have enough. Mm. If you send us the right information, we can we can the make it. The technology is there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah you know, so we, we, what I'll, sorry, what I'd like point, to we, say is that you've gone through several steps. We're at a point now where we have vertical established. Mm -hmm. Okay, yep. but here's the thing that dentists really struggle at: is tooth size and shape okay mm. now we know that from basic anatomy where does eight and nine go mm. right middle of the face we know the lip at rest and all those things but the actual shape of the tooth how the embrasures look and all these things for years when i started doing hybrid prosthetics it was all bar wrapped in acrylic and it was basically you know the true bite tooth size indicator right. and like a sleeve of a, basically a plastic thing of denture teeth, you know. Right, from the old, trench coat salesman. Yeah, exactly. Mm. And so, <laughs> that, you know, Big and one. I'm that guy that has that in my office, but I rarely get it out because I'm using photos and I'm mm. full face photos, profile shots, 45 Amen. on, those type things. Mm. I, I just feel like, though, that sometimes that our denture teeth, the, the high quality denture teeth, are better than what our software is giving us. Now we're d diverting just a little bit here to the to the type of teeth, right? Oh, and that, you guys that are telling be... me, you guys are telling me, what you're telling me is that your software design, okay, is better than our denture teeth because I think that denture teeth, in some respects, still have it beat because we're dealing with mm. so many different libraries here. Okay, Zircon Zahn has a library. Maybe they've got a better canine. It's kind of like this game you play right. a little bit. And can we smooth this edge out? But you don't want to do that as a clinician because if you're setting these things up digitally, you want to just basically say, boom, there it is. But I feel like there's some limitations digitally, John. And I mean, that, that's, And that's why I'm this old that's man. My, that's I'm my worry. I'm this old man. Right. Because when I put... But are, but are we wrong? Yeah. Because, and I'm not saying that I mean, like... I mean, don't... If, if, if we need to be challenged on that, I think that's a good challenge. I mean, do you feel like, I mean, again, you, we send you the right information based on your experience because I feel like once we're in that prototype, we're locked into the final. Yeah, the, there's it, no it, more moving or carving or changing in right. well, it's, Are we it's, good it's, enough it's that we can make it? It's interesting with, with the prototype. So the prototype, you're never locked in. So so first try and whether it's a prototype or a wax setup with denture teeth, um, I tell everybody it's like a single central. It's educated guess. Right. That's what it is. And, and, and if you if we if we nail it and we hit on all cylinders, that's brilliant. If not, you can guarantee we're coming right back around and making the needed corrections mm. in digital. Just because it's milled in one piece traditionally and like Connor was saying, and you guys mentioned, I'll still get the guys that want to actually reset teeth in the mouth. Yep. Right. They'll especially, uh, you know, between uh, uh, six and eleven or seven through ten. And that's and that's understandable and understanding. The same thing that you can't do that on a milled prototype, but there's there's still a lot of things you can do to that prototype to gather more information for me on my end where I can make those corrections and send it back to you. Now, if we were sitting at, let's say, Chicago midwinter and we had 500 technicians in a room, we asked them the number one problem with digital 
they'll probably all jump up at the same time and say libraries. Yes. And that's some what I'm libraries about. Yeah. are better than others. Um, there's there's a lot of libraries that are basically scans of natural teeth mm-hmm. that didn't come from the same human arch, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, it, there's just, it's, but, it's, it's a crazy mess. But when we do them, we try to match and mimic exactly what you give to us. Now, what that causes is more possible labor on our end. What you have for for going ahead and doing that you can't get it out of a out of a can basically but i mm. think we're missing an important point here because i i agree and i don't agree because what we have is the ability it's it's not all just library put them in there and mill them if you if you take a digital impression of the hybrid we'll take that and actually diagnostically re-wax that case so mm. there's a lot of artistry that we can put in around the corners you know uh, broaden the buckle arch, those kind of things. Yeah. So it's not click and play. It it definitely gives us the ability. The advantage of staying in digital is that there's no surprises. It might be a little harder to get to that point where we can go prototype and go final. So remember a case we had a couple of weeks ago, two or three digital try-ins or, or prototype try-ins. And eventually I said, let's go back to wax because you can go in the mouth, you can shift the teeth around and give us mm-hmm. what you saw. So there's there's definitely an advantage mm. to, to be able to set up teeth and I don't think that'll ever go away. But I don't think we need to look at digital as black and white. You only got four libraries you got to choose from because we have the ability to diagnostic wax. Right. And, and when we do a review, and that's what's so great about our clinicians, we can work with, you know, we work with guys in Portland, Oregon, We'll set up a, a, a team view. He's there. We finish the wax up, and he gets exactly what he wants. So I think there's a lot of advanced jumps now that's not just click and play. You know, it's, yeah, it's not just plug and play room, dentistry. Though, I'll be honest, for some education for the chair, chair side clinician and how to work with tooth shape and size and molds. Mm. Pretty much well, every dentist knows how to set an incisal edge correctly Okay, that's doing these. Okay. It's interesting you mentioned that in, in what you kind of like to specialize in because the best hybrid restorative clinicians I've ever met in my life removables. are amazing removable Amen. clinicians. Yes. That's exactly they are what we said. The yeah, that's what it is because it's all dentures, of the man. best. I mean, these guys, you'll go through a case with them, and, and, and we have one here that we did for one of the technicians mm-hmm. at the lab, and that bite came together, and it was sexy. It was bam, and this yeah. guy can place teeth and arrange teeth in the mouth like you've never seen anybody do and when it's all said and done and it comes down to that bite and it comes down to the tooth arrangement i mean they're the best removable clinicians that are incredibly strong are the best hybrid clinicians you got to give barry goldenberg a shout out on that one that's a positive so but but it's you know i think this is a great discussion about what this appointment looks like because it really can look like several different things Mm -hmm. right Mm -hmm. and i think that you know if you are a novice clinician, let me ask you one more question about this as we're talking about these different branches. If you're a novice clinician, this is your first case, which path do you recommend that they go down? Mm. Do you recommend wax or do you what, do you recommend taking an impression of the conversion prosthesis and some high quality photos and going the digital route? I'm going to default to you on that one. I'll, I'm going to I'm going to say the, <laughs> the best way if you if you have a if you're a novice clinician patient shows up with the you know 80% accurately converted hybrid mm. hands down the best way send us the hybrid with the impression we'll pour it mount it make our indexes and we'll give you something that's that's almost 100% there it's not always possible mm-hmm. the second most accurate technique i call it the morano technique is place that hybrid on the model take an impression send that to us there's there's some room for error yeah. in there you know jack's not perfect but you know he's pretty mm-hmm. good and take your bite registration too on that prosthetic exactly right. thank you, you take so the we bite as send well. the bite send the, send the send the um the model and then send basically your yeah, putty impression, your putty impression, putty impression. of right. the prosthetic bolted down to the okay. model. Well, that's and, what I wanted to hear you say is just, mm. you know, that's how much faith that you are putting I like it. in this process. So let's, so mm. we've, so we've now, uh, however we've gotten to the prototype, we've gotten to the prototype. Okay. So, so the lab then makes a prototype and sends that back and then what's going to happen. What does the next appointment look like? Just screw in the prototype and, and yes, what are we, what right. are we doing? So I think, you know, before we answer that, the third 
pr uh, clinical appointment, there's two ways of making this prototype, which I think is important. So mm. the one way is if you have a well-converted um, hybrid that's not falling apart and you don't need an emergency denture, we can actually print the prototype, just print it with normal PMA, yeah. you know, cast the lab. I don't want to say how much it costs, doesn't cost us much. My colleagues might not like it if, mm. we, if we blow the uh, industry secrets here, but that's a very <laughs> affordable way to do it. The problem with a printed hybrid is there's no pink, and the whole idea is to make it efficient. So what Jack and myself do is we'll put a, a base plate pink wax on it, just quickly festoon it, that yeah. would give the patient an idea of what they're looking at. The one we like to work with is the mold hybrid, and I think we right. spoke about this last time. Well, we and, used and, yeah, and they can't, very important to note, the printed prototypes are brilliant. And they're, they're dead on accurate, as accurate as anything else, as accurate mm. as the milled uh, prototype, but they cannot wear them, which is very, very important. Do not let them get up mm. and out of the chair with them. And then the problem where this lies, where we'll lead to the better, more aesthetic milled PMMA prototype is because when you put that in their mouth, they don't want to give it up. So mm. we see that time and time again. So this is where you might be more interested in a milled, highly aesthetic mm. PMMA temp like, like Harvest. Sorry to, yeah. sorry to interrupt, but mm. go. Uh, no, and, and the value of that is, you know, and this has been our argument because we can do some amazing, you know, transitional PMMAs. And that gives the patient something they can look at and say, that's what I like. Right. Mm -hmm. When we get to that stage, you know, and I always hear the argument, I've heard this argument a thousand times, make the temp short, yellow, make it stand out, make sure that patient comes back. Jack and I look at this and say, what if we give the patient something so aesthetic that they can't wait to see the final? Right. Mm -hmm. And say, wow, you think that's good? Come back in two weeks and we'll show you what's really good. Yeah. Now, the advantage for us is, there's no question between that long term, we call it an intermediate temp. Mm. And let's say the pay, you're not sure on the bite. And this is what I like yeah, the about bio this prototyping, like we were talking about. Give them the a bio weekend. prototyping. Yeah, we were talking um, to one of the Dr. Lars Boma. Lars Boma do, it does a lot yeah. of bio prototyping with these milled PMMA uh, uh Restoration, yeah. And hybrids. he would let that patient walk around in that, I think he said three months. Yeah. And th let them three to wear six their months. function. And then send that back and copy that. Because it final. becomes a diagnostic tool as well. It's not right. so much a provisional, but then what he's doing and, and his technique is 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 really fascinating is he believes that's really the best information, way to gather information in regards to the bite. Mm -hmm. And he's letting them wear right into that and, and basically calling it bio-prototyping. They're doing it themselves. Right. And then sending that back to the laboratory and getting an exact exact replica of, of that. that, right? but in zirconia. And you know, that way you what can tell if the patient is, you to do is locked in. Say, um, what? We use we use Harvest Dental's Harvest Dental so PMMA, double cross-link PMMA. Yeah, it's called so the So I just want to make sure I understand again, let's kind of unpack that just a little bit or, or clarify. Sure. So you're saying that your kind of preferred way to go into that next appointment is to make potentially a printed prototype, which mm -hmm. is going to give you uh, essentially a snapshot of are we yep. where we need to be? Are we close? Are we close right. enough that we can go ahead to that next step? And you're showing the patient a preview. Uh, you're allowing for the patient to get excited. You're going to grind in the occlusion? Right, a little bit, yep. Yeah, yeah. yeah so you're going to do some minor occlusal adjustments mm -hmm. if we're close enough for that. If the or midline's if, off, you can cut it right into there. If you need to yep. shorten 7 and 10, grind it so right on the prototype. So it's a wax rim slash tooth try-in yeah. slash right. tooth try-in. Right. Yep. Check the fox plane. Check the basic mm -hmm. curve yeah. speed. You look at all your, your curves. Check your bubble port. It's basically removable and prosthetics. The, and the patient doesn't take it home, uh, like you say, because it's weak. And yep. you're essentially just using that as a communication tool. Take your photos. Go through what you need to go through. And then potentially even could do a second one of those if you yep. were enough away mm -hmm. from where you wanted to be that uh, as in communication with and the does technician. That, have, that doesn't have pink on it, does it? We, we just use some a strip of wax on it. You know, just okay. put a little strip okay. of wax. In Makes sense. That way you're not very spending so much time using Gradia Composite yeah, or something yeah. like that. Because yeah. we're trying to not up the fees with this. You know, we're trying to keep these it's things good, affordable. Good yeah. Like yeah. So yeah. how do you, and, and let me just ask real quickly on that. When you do, this is a package I'm guessing you guys do, that's a package mm -hmm. deal. And we don't mm -hmm. want to talk about exact cost. That doesn't matter sure. for this discussion. But do you include essentially as many of those printed prototypes as you need? Is that an additional cost? Yeah, or how yeah. does that work with, with that? Because, of course, our dentists are thinking about this. They're thinking, sure. okay, you know, if I need, do I need to buy another prototype? Or how does that work? 
No, so we include a printed prototype because mm. it's very efficient. We can we can harvest the uh, the components and reuse them if we need to do it. The milled yeah. provisional. The milled provisional is a bit of a different story because you know there's a lot of artistry that goes into that. Sure. sure. Now, I will say, if it's mom, I'm going to say let's go to a. Uh, long-term transitional, mm. it gives them an emergency danger. If something breaks, you know, go to the dentist, unscrew four screws. Our goal over the last few years is moving away from a, a full services lab to a full solutions lab. I think labs are really struggling today just to say I'm full service. You know, you've mm. got to be a solutions lab to your clinicians. And I think that's where the value lies in, in thinking outside the box. For me, if we can put that patient in a long-term transitional, A, they have a long-term immediate denture that they can wear for you know, six or eight months, which means the patient don't call, doesn't call you on a Saturday and say, I broke my number eight, we got to get right. this fixed immediately. The true advantage, and this is where you know, Dr. Bromar gave us such a good lead into this, was yeah. put that patient in that transitional, it's... You know, it's as strong as it's FDA approved for, I think, five years. Five years, yeah. So it's a really strong material. And see if anything with your setup is wrong. Mm -hmm. Make sure the patient goes home, shows the family. We did a case a couple of months ago. Patient loved it, absolutely loved it, cried in the chair. Her family from upstate came to town and said, ugh, you look terrible. We literally redid the case because her aunt didn't like what she saw. And it put enough doubt in her mind that she said, I think I agree with her, let's redo it. So having that long-term transitional, which Jack can copy to a T, yep. and you agree with that, that's I, where I the do. technology and, is. And, that's, and it's not, the, the fee isn't really, it's, it's not substantial, it's, that's it's quite minor, it's and you get it back, yeah. so you get to keep it. I mean, mm-hmm. when we do the final, you get that back at the end, and that can go home with the patient, mm-hmm. um, just for some feel-good. I mean, I'm, I'm going to say it's zirconia, you're not going to need the feel-good, but it just it's just nice to have. You're basically sure. delivering two hybrids. Yeah. Just to give you an example, you know, technology has made us so much more efficient. Um, a zirconia now with printed PMMA is about 4350. Yeah, 4350. If we add a long-term transitional, which is approved for you know five years into our use, it's still less than five thousand. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Where these cases used to be seven, eight thousand dollars a case. You know, yeah. it's very affordable for for very high quality products. We advocate the use of these. John and I both do these. Oh. Highly mm. recommend it because when the patient walks in, and, and I'm just saying, it, it might happen, it might not ever happen. And you just got to take something out and get it repaired, whatever that is, okay? Right. right. Having this long-term prototype, mm. it saves my butt. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, I'm serious. It's patients, a stress relief. Patients love it. You yeah. know, because they think, bucks yeah. you can this, spend this That's good. what it is. Yeah. If this looks good. And the nice thing is if it's something terminal on the on the long term, that patient can be in that comfortably for months yeah. without having and to worry about it. It's a record too. If if you wanted mm. to fast forward twenty years and we just had this where a patient was in a car accident, right? Mm. And broke their hybrid. They hit the they hit the steering wheel, right? So it obviously the airbag didn't sure. go off. Yeah. And um, now if they had this Right, we already have that. Switch let's back. say master record. Switch them back, or you, we can use it. We can mount all the ca- the case back up. I mean, it's it's all our information is already gathered. It saves the clinician it's, so much yep. clinical time. So if before goes wrong. we go on to the next step, mm. I'm this next step. Everything John has built up to this. Mm-hmm. The patient has approved prosthetics. You've approved the bite. All right. What you know, things are really excited. Right. And before we go to that, right, we're going to make you guys wait. Right. John? Yeah. We, I mean, I think that uh, we're going we're gonna to just for right, this is so good, and we've gotten so much good information. And I think what we're going to do, uh, easiest way to do this is you now know all the steps up to final. And final is so important, this but final what about, step. what about the lab? And now? all the things that can go wrong Really, this is where everything comes down to it. Everything comes down to what you've done, all the information you provided, uh, and now the lab's going to do their magic. But, John, I could choose a lab that could do it $1,000 cheaper. Right. So there's a lot of things that we need to get into. Zirconia, their yeah. using is just so, as good so as... So here's what we're yeah. going to do. We want you guys right now to... Uh, this, this, these episodes are going to be released 
one right after the other. Yep. And uh, so we know you've enjoyed this so far. So come back for the next episode where you're going to learn about the final step and all of the things that go along with that from the lab perspective that can go wrong. And we're going to we want to hear some horror stories. We want to hear some horror stories well, we, we, we about some, some things ones. that have happened that have gone wrong and why. Because that's what really it, the rubber meets the road yep. when you have the failures and you have the problems. And we're going to learn more about that. So check us out on our socials, Facebooks. Uh, we want you to hit us up on Instagram, hit us up on Twitter, and we'll be back the next time with Conrad, with Jack, on another episode of The Dental Guys.